God's Eternal Purpose by Gary Siegler Chapter 11 I am so grateful for the unveiling that is taking place today among God's people. We are a blessed people to experience the preciousness of the Spirit within each of us. The church is the fullness of Him who fills everything, everywhere, with Himself. Ephesians 1, verse 23. God's eternal purpose is not like I thought it was for so many years, to just raise up a bunch of religious people. The purpose is to raise up a people who would express His life and His loveliness on the earth. We know now that even the quantum physicist tells us that all things have their beginning in one source. Of course, we call that source God. Some people just call it source or light or love, which all means the same thing. God is love. And when we really have that revelation and understanding that God is love, and when we experience the depth of that love, we become love personified. We really have two choices of what kind of life we are going to live, and the choice we make will determine what we express. We can either live out of a carnal mind, whether it be religious or not, or make the choice to really go before the Lord and open our hearts to really have Him unveil us to the truth of what we've read for so many years in Scripture. We sing about it. We talk about it. And today, it is time to be it. I see God's people all over the earth beginning to awaken to the truth of being a manifestation of God on this earth. Carol and I are so blessed because we get to travel extensively, and everywhere we go, we see people who are beginning to wake up. I don't think any of us are any further ahead than anybody else, because this is a corporate experience we are entering into. We all have different gifts and functions, but we are all on the journey to live in the good land of our spirit. It is not that any of us have anything above anybody else, but we have certain gifts and certain functions, and that is what the body is all about. You know, Paul said so many years ago, if we were all the mouth or we were all the ear, we would not have a complete body. It takes all of us to manifest God on the earth. We are learning to appreciate all the different parts and functions of the body. God's body is a functioning, living, vibrating organism. God's intention was never for a bunch of people to come and just listen to one man give a message. That is not the purpose. But at the same time, it's very necessary for people who are just coming into the understanding and the awareness that we are coming into. It's very important for men to speak a word to bring clarity and understanding to the new ones. Those of us who have been in this message for a few years, for us to have to come week after week and Sunday after Sunday, and just sit and listen to somebody else with no functioning of the body, there is something wrong with that picture. I know how difficult it is if you are a shy and introverted person. I was so shy and introverted that I actually left churches and wouldn't go back if I thought they were going to call on me to stand up and pray or to give a testimony. God's purpose is to have a functioning, living organism. For years, I couldn't even stand up and give a testimony, so I know how difficult it is. But I also know the power and the ability that is in us. I knew for years I couldn't do anything. I couldn't stand up and give a testimony. I couldn't witness on the streets. I couldn't do anything. I knew that. What I didn't know is that within me was the ability and the substance to do anything. And that is the difference between us and what Jesus realized, because he, he too said, I of mine own self can do nothing. 
but yet look what he did. I knew for years I couldn't do anything, but I still kept trying, and that is why I say we have to have a shift in our focus about our true nature and identity, because as long as we realize we can't do anything and keep trying, we'll always be a failure. If we stop trying and just simply sit in the quiet, open our hearts and say, God, what about this? What about what you said in your scriptures? What about the commission you gave to your disciples to raise the dead and heal the sick? I'm not saying we should go do those things because you can try it, but you will fail. But if he tells you to do anything, you will not fail. I've laid hands on people and literally seen them fly like a bullet across the room. You think I can do that? None of us have the ability to make things happen. And we need to stop trying to make it happen. The key to working the works of God is to hear Him speak to you. The way into a holy, consecrated life of expressing all that is in you is simply learn to enjoy God. It takes no special ability. It does not take a special person. It doesn't take anything but willingness and openness to spend time in the presence of God until He begins to speak to you. Most of us don't have the patience for that. In our minds, we still operate out of this carnal nature, and in that nature, all of us feel like individuals separated from one another and alone. We are all trying within our own beings, our own selves, to incorporate what we've learned into our lives, and it doesn't work that way. It's not bad that we try, but once we are unveiled to the mind of Christ, once the Spirit of the living God begins to illuminate our inner being, we realize we are never alone, and we have never been alone. There is never a second or never a moment that we can't turn to the Spirit within our very own being and begin to release the flow of His life. The only thing that will bring us into conformity to His will is the inner life, the inner anointing, and the energizing power of His Spirit within us. It's the only thing that will cause us to walk a righteous life. Nothing else will work. All of us have the same life in nature within us. In reality, as we've shared, and I know you know this, there is only one life in this whole universe, and all of us have full access to that life within us. It is so important that we change our focus from a God outside of us to the Spirit within us. God is everywhere. I would not limit God to my physical being. However, the only place in reality that you'll find God is within yourself. If you don't find that reality within yourself, how could you ever walk in the kingdom experientially? God is love, light, energy, source, consciousness, spirit, and word. There are so many different descriptions for God. Most of them are better than the word God because the word God today, most of the time when you mention God, it puts people's minds in a place where it shouldn't go because of what religion has done to that word. Most people today, if you say God, they have an image of God in their minds. That image for most Christians is a fearful thing because God loves you, but if you don't live according to the law, you don't live according to God's standards, oh, he loves you, but you may end up in a torture chamber. If I say to you, source or light that is really hard to get a definitive description of, except you know light is light. It is energizing. It's quickening. Light dispels the darkness. We know Jesus said, I am the light. But then he told his disciples, you are the light of the world. The key for us to walk in the kingdom now is for us, 
is to learn how to contact the inner life of our spirit. Years ago, I used to share an illustration about the impartiality of God. If you want to be energized with electricity, you could uncap a light socket and grab a hold of that bare wire, and you will find out electricity is impartial. If you touch it, it is going to get into you. We have an energizing life force in the center of our being. That life force does not care anything about your good or evil. You could be the worst person on the face of this earth. But if you learn to turn and touch that energy force on the inside of you, every time that you touch it, it releases God's essence from your being. The more you learn to turn and touch God in reality, that energizing life force on the inside of you, the more it will infiltrate into your system. If you grab a bare wire, it doesn't care how you lived your life today. It is going to get in you. And in that sense, God is just as impartial as an electrical wire. If you touch the spirit of life within you, life will flow from your inner being and you will be transformed. For so long in the church system, we weren't taught anything about our inner life. It was all about reaching for God outside of you in the heavens. Well, that is really truth, but the heavens aren't somewhere outside of you, and that is why Paul could say to the Ephesians, Even when we were dead in trespasses and sins, he made us alive and raised us up together and seated us together in heavenly places. Heavenly place is a conscious awareness of Christ in you living and functioning from the realm of spirit. We are all seated with Christ in those heavenly places, but most are not aware of it. When did that happen? It certainly wasn't when you went to an altar or you said, Jesus, I receive you. This is the magnificent message of the cross that even when you were walking around as a dead man in trespasses and sins and had no concept or knowledge of God whatsoever, even when you were dead in trespasses and sins, you were raised out of that life of death and seated in heavenly places. We keep trying to reach God somewhere else. When we are seated with him right now in heavenly places. Jesus said something that for a long time was a mystery to me, but I understand it now. When he was talking to Nicodemus, he said, No man has ascended up to heaven except he that came down from heaven, even the Son of Man, which is in heaven. Well, that didn't make any sense. Now, was he on earth or was he in heaven? But he was both. And we can say the same thing. No man can ascend to heaven except he came down from heaven. That is why I say it is so important for us to understand that we did not begin with a sperm and an egg. Our beginnings were in Genesis chapter 1. That is where we all began. Our bodies came from a sperm and an egg, but remember, the child was born, but the son was given. So within our very own being is everything that we could possibly ever need. Within you is the counselor. Remember what Jesus said? It is so important that I go away, because if I go away, the counselor will come. He also said, when he, the spirit of truth, is come, he will teach you of all things. How many of us, speaking in general terms across the Christian world, how many are taught by the spirit? When he, the spirit of truth, when he comes, when that candle, that spirit, the light of God within you is quickened and regenerated, you have a counselor that will never steer you wrong. I have a message that I gave a few years ago called God's Infallible Guidance System. 
You see, when you really begin to function out of your own anointing, and you begin to seek counsel, not from another, but listen to the Spirit within you, you will be led by the Spirit. We've had many great spiritual writers in the past who have told us, every one of them, do not lean on the arm of the flesh. Do not go to flesh for your answers. If you feel that God wants you to do something, don't go to the arm of the flesh to find out or get a confirmation. You do need to be clear, but you need to get that clarity from within your own being. And I understand this message is so hard for the religious mind, but within you is the wisdom. Christ is made unto you wisdom and righteousness and sanctification and redemption.